everybody and welcome. It appears the seemingly never-ending saga of Boeing CST-100 Starliner space capsule has, well, not really come to an end, but at least the latest chapter can now be closed. In the night from September 6th to September 7th, Starliner's mission to the ISS ended when it departed from the space station, re-entered the atmosphere and landed in New Mexico uncrewed leaving the two astronauts who launched with it on June 5th still aboard the ISS. Today I want to talk about why I believe it's imperative that Starliner gets flying again soon and why I believe that there need to be even more crewed vehicles in the future. Speaking of the future, in a couple of months this channel is going to celebrate its 10th year anniversary. I know it's a bit cheesy, but I really want to reach the 100,000 subscriber mark before it does. So if you could hit that subscribe button, it would go a long way to reaching that goal. Speaking of goals, Starliner's now ended mission had a very important one. To prove that the vehicle can deliver astronauts safely to low Earth orbit and return them back in one piece. While humanity has performed this task multiple times with a couple of different spacecraft designs, it is still one of the most challenging things to get right. Especially since the vehicle has to operate in one of the deadliest environments humans have ever ventured into. I'm not going to reiterate Starliner's tumultuous history, let's just say that a previous test flight didn't work out well and during the current one multiple malfunctions occurred. This forced NASA to let Starliner land uncrewed and have astronaut veterans Barry Wilmore and Sunita Williams return on a later flight aboard SpaceX's Crew Dragon. Boeing kind of threw a fit and pulled out of a joint press conference with NASA after that decision was made, and even though NASA said that the astronauts would have been safe during re-entry and landing, despite additional malfunctions during the return, it's not a given that Boeing will want to continue with Starliner at all. Let's assume Boeing really decides to throw in the towel. That would be bad for NASA, for the United States and also for the world. Here's why. The entire reason for Starliner's existence is the commercial crew program which set out to find a replacement for the aging space shuttle back in 2010. The United States in general, and NASA in particular, wanted to move away from developing crew vehicles themselves, hoping to lower the cost involved in the process by sourcing the vehicles from commercial providers. In the end, SpaceX's Crew Dragon and Boeing's Starliner made the cut. Crew Dragon is considered widely as a huge success with multiple missions to the ISS for NASA and some completely privately funded space missions under its belt. The most recent one is Polaris Dawn, which wants to perform the first ever spacewalk done by a commercial crew. When this video is released, this will already have happened. So yeah, the US already has Crew Dragon. Why would they need a second vehicle? Well, those of you who aren't around this long or maybe have forgotten, during the time between the final launch of a space shuttle and SpaceX finalizing its vehicle, there were a couple of years where NASA had to buy seats on Russian Soyuz capsules to deliver their astronauts to space. Not only was the United States dependent on another country, it also cost a fortune to send astronauts to space. The Russian space agency Roscosmos charged $90 million per crew member, massively more than the $55 million that SpaceX charges NASA for a seat aboard Crew Dragon. If Starliner does not become a viable option for years to come, SpaceX will have a monopoly on space transportation for the Western Hemisphere. Because let's face it, China will not launch European or American astronauts, and the relationship between the West and Russia has severely deteriorated since the latter invaded Ukraine. Never in the history of humanity has a monopoly ever worked out well for society. Even if SpaceX does not slide down the path of corporate greed and fleece customers for every penny since they are the only game in town when it comes to commercial crude spaceflight, not having competition will lead to a reduction in innovation. It has happened time and time again. Yes, Starship is a thing and it will be available for crewed flights one day, but Elon Musk will be gone at one point and whether you like him or not, he is a strong driving force behind the innovation that has propelled SpaceX to where it is now. If the wrong people take over after him, SpaceX could end up resting on their laurels and just trying to squeeze as much money as they can instead of moving humanity forward. Very similar to what happened to Boeing over the past couple of decades, coincidentally. 
In short, having more than one crude spacecraft provider is imperative for redundancy, for competition and for innovation. It also acts as a signal to new companies. If they see there is a chance for more than one company to thrive in the space economy, it will attract more of them to try their luck in this environment. As of now, there are just two, Crew Dragon and Starliner. The space plane Dream Chaser is set to fly aboard ULA's Vulcan Centaur next year, first as a cargo variant and later hopefully also as a crew variant. And Blue Origin is supposedly developing something called Bionic to send astronauts into space and return them safely back home. Other than that, there are only the suborbital space tourist attractions Virgin Galactic and New Shepard, which basically offer expensive joyrides for rich people so they can experience weightlessness and see the edge of space for a few moments. But that is just the United States. The rest of the world? Well, there's not really any commercial crew vehicle in sight. Russia has their decades-old Soyuz, China has their Shenzhou, which is derived from the Soyuz, and India is working on their Gaganyaan crew capsule, which is set to do an uncrewed test flight sometime later this year. All of these are operated by their respective national space agencies. And with this we come to one of my pet peeves. The crewed spaceflight situation in Europe. Because it's non-existent right now. Europe has slapped on space transportation in a lot of ways. Ariane 6 may have performed great during its inaugural flight a couple of weeks ago, but its entire concept is, well, old. And maybe one day it will send Susie to orbit the jack-of-all-trades concept vehicle that is currently being developed. The problem is, Europe, or more specifically the European Space Agency ESA, does not have a good track record when it comes to developing crewed vehicles. There was the Hermes spaceplane during the 80s, but it never reached production and was cancelled in 1992. Ever since then, no European space vehicle was developed that could send humans to space and return them safely to Earth. But even though it is slow to move, ESA has made some steps to securing a more independent future for spaceflight. The agency wants to help private space companies to develop a cargo vehicle to ferry equipment to and from the ISS. One applicant to this program is a capsule called Argo, which is going to be developed by Rocket Factory Augsburg. RFA has made a lot of progress over the past few years in getting their own launch vehicle ready, but had a setback recently when the first stage of their inaugural flight hardware was destroyed during a static fire test. In October I'm going to attend the Space Creator Day in Germany again and I hope I can again talk a bit with their people about Argo. But I also hope that a lot more companies will step forward and develop new flight hardware. As I said before, we need more than just one player controlling the commercial crewed spaceflight market. And from a European perspective, we need to step up a lot more than what we did over the past couple of decades. As for Starliner's future, there are rumors that Boeing does not really want to continue with it. While I am not a fan of that company, I still think the US would do well to have more crewed vehicles at the ready and right now Starliner is the only viable option. Do you agree with me on this? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments down below or join me on my Discord server, link is in the description. What's also in the description are links to my Patreon and how to become a YouTube member. If you decide to join either, your name could show up here, together with all of these wonderful people who support what I try to do here. Thank you so much for your support. After the summer where things usually calm down a bit on my channel, more video production will pick up soon, so keep an eye out for that. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.